The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 8th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always give us a call at 877-927-6648. Of course, I think I already said that. Sorry about that. Kind of focusing on two different things. Shouldn't be doing that, Stevie. But you can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, inside our Tiger's Den. Well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Mixed bag out there. That mix is only coming from the Dow, which is down 111 points. Probably Boeing being the one that is uh, moving that lower with regard to that 737 incident out there. But you've got the S&P up 24. NASDAQ's up 202. Russell's up 17. Semis are up 109. That's nearly a 3% move to the upside out there. Gold's off seven bucks now. Silver is up eight pennies. Lights Recruit is off three bucks. Down nets down four percent. Three and a half percent for natural gas or ten cents out there. And the thirty year treasury up nearly one point, printed out at one twenty two twenty six. Now the leader in the clubhouse, dollar wise, to the upside, super micro. Up twenty four bucks and eight percent. Broadcom twenty two bucks, two percent. Nvidia twenty two bucks, four and a half percent. Lam Research eighteen bucks, two and a half percent. Service now two and three quarters percent or eighteen bucks. To the downside, it's regenerate pharmaceuticals off twenty seven. 3%. Boeing's down 17 or 7%. MicroStrategy 17, 2.7%. Uh, Prothena Corp down 10 bucks, 24 percent. Elevance Health down 760. That's a little over one and a half percent to the downside. Let's go take a look at the equity future contracts out here. I did mention there are two that are attempting to form new profiles. Let's go take a look at those. That would be the ES Mini. That's going to be in your upper left hand side, and you're going to see the NQ your upper right hand side. So in the case of the ES Mini. It's actually kind of hard to see. If I blow it up just a tad, if I turn it off price, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Let me just turn off price. Give me a second here. Now, this profile is not going to confirm until this evening. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't use the data because we do. So you can see this is the profile. When I turn price on, you'll see now that uh, the profile is above price. That's typically a bearish message. But on a rally, price could easily go target the bottom of that profile, that's up at the 47.99 level. So you've got the bottom at 47.99, the center at 48.27, the top at 48.41.50 out there. That's what's going on. We take a look at the ES Mini. Now, the ES Mini has a change in trend signal because price closed below the bottom of its prior profile out there. This is the interesting thing. Those of you that have listened in on the show out here uh, long enough know that uh, we take a look at where those profiles form. When the bottom of the current profile is forming above the prior bottom, well, that's a signal, and the top is above the prior top, that's a bullish message. It's like higher highs and higher lows only from a profile language standpoint. In this case here, the bottom and the center are above the prior bottom and center, but the top is right at the exact same thing. Now, the last time that we had that unfold was back here during this trading session between November 27th 
And that profile lasted through December the 19th out there. So you can see that there is a new profile that formed on the trading day of December 5th. The high remained, it, well, actually the high was just slightly different. So a little bit different than what we're looking at, just slightly different. I, I'm looking at right now, but nonetheless similar out there. Now, in this case here, this profile when it formed was not above price versus the one that we've got right now. Nonetheless, it still has Stevie from a profile standpoint, a bit confused out there. So what I would say is that if price can close above Friday's high, Friday's high was 47.6025, we probably get at least a third day of rallying with that price target being 47.99. Remember, uh, Monday, Friday was day number one of a, a rally, typically even in bear markets. If that's what we're beginning out here, uh, you would see a two-day knee-jerk reaction high. Now, if we don't take out uh, yesterday, a uh, Friday's high out there. That's really not a great scene. So it's different than when we take a look at the NQ. In the case of the NQ, we're trading above Friday's high. Now, it is also attempting to form a new profile. I say attempting because I'm using my advanced Doppler tool. And I keep turning it on and off just to see if we get new profiles or if it resets, and it does. So it's a pretty strong profile. Now, in the case of the uh, NQ, the bottom of that profile is at 16.417. The center is at 16.583. We're trained above that, and the top is at 16.749. If price can remain above the 16.583 area out there, odds favor a move up towards that 16.749 level. Those are the only two of the four equity future contracts that are attempting to form new profiles. The Dow is still trading inside its new profile. It has never given us a change in trend signal out there, and it won't unless price were to close below 37,606. That's the bottom of that new profile out there. The Russell remains below the bottom of its profile. I would say if price can close above Friday's high, Friday's high, 1898, I'm sorry, 1989, 10. Don't worry, I'll eventually be able to read. 1989, 10 is the number of price close above that. Odds favor a further rally with 2009 being the likely price target. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame as well as the new profiles that are attempting to form. Let's go ahead and take our charts. Let's take a look at what's going on under the hood intraday. So we're going to turn over to my white background charts, and there we'll see multiple time frames. And we can be able to get a feel for what each of them are communicating to us. For example, in the case of the five-hour time frame chart, the current bar here is going to complete at 2 p.m. If at 2 p.m. the NQ is trading above 16,587 and 25 ticks out there, odds favor a further move higher. In fact, there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. In the case of the NQ, for its four-hour time frame, price closed above profile resistance, 16,587. Its message to you and I, it wants to make a run to the 16,729. Remember, the new profile is up at 16,749. So 16,729 to 16,749 seems likely. 16,729 is also the second TD9 count breakdown resistance for the two-hour time frame chart. Price closed above the first one. That's a bullish signal out there. That suggests it moved to 16,729. It gets us back towards that 16,749 level. On a 60-minute time frame, I just see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's a 30-minute is the one that each of us should watch. Why? Because it has confirmed, it has completed a TD9 count top. Now, let's expand this out. If price closes above on a 30-minute basis, now, here's the last TD9 count top, by the way. I remember posting that inside the Tiger's Den as we were closing out the show on Friday. And that was the TD9 count top, and that was the high. That was the remaining high for the uh, for the uh, day out there. Well, now we've got another one. But if price closes above, this is the thing to watch, 16.671.25, that's going to tell us about further highs to come. Steve Rhodes with TFN. When we come back, we'll finish taking a look at the NQ. Then we'll jump, jump, jump on to NVIDIA, the SMH, SMCI, and Disney. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, folks, we're going to go take a look at the gold charts with John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this morning? Steve, I'm doing excellent. I uh, hope you're doing the same, and thanks for taking the call. Steve, My pleasure. I, I wanted to uh, give you a call in to uh, talk over and ask your question or ask you questions regarding COMEX Gold because I observed something real fascinating this morning uh, at uh, 618. There was a block sale of over 4,000 contracts uh, in that one-minute period of time. The prior low, that was the low of Friday, I believe that number was 2-0. On that number was busted. Uh, uh, it printed down to 2023, and I saw, I saw that in real time happening, and I was asking myself the question at that moment in time, yeah, is this a uh, standard uh, flush that uh, the operators in Comex Gold uh, execute so well so often, or was it something more bearish? Well, we got our answer very quickly, uh, and we've uh, bounced up, and now we're what nineteen bucks off bucks, that yeah. low. Yeah. So th that's just a quick ex uh, quick discussion of what occurred. I suspect that's a uh, a bottom of a pullback, these 28 to January 8th, uh, testing and holding a FIB 618 level. Uh, that's my suspicion. Is there something in your work that either supports that idea or conflicts? That's my question, please. Ah, okay, great. So I, I would say, so the answer to your question would be, so cool that you're watching that in real time. Were you also, was there anything that you saw unusual in the currencies? Were you taking a look at what was going on in the dollar, the euro, the yen, or anything along those lines? Uh, Steve, you know me. I'm a slow learner. Uh, my mind works slowly, so the answer is no, I was focusing on nothing else. Okay, okay. Because what I thought was kind of interesting this morning when I finally got in front of the uh, screens out here was gold was trading lower. 
Um, it was probably right at about that, uh, it was a little bit after 619, so it's around 630 out there. And what I noticed at that time was that even though gold was trading, so both gold and silver were trading lower, the U.S. dollar index wasn't doing anything. And on Friday, it threatened to break out. And so I'm going to, I've got the U.S. dollar index uh, chart up on my screen right now, so everybody at home can take a look at it. And we can see that descending trend line that is held as resistance as well as the top of its profile, so 102.26. So seeing that and knowing the current correlation that exists between the dollar and uh, Goldilocks, I think your assessment seems to me to be more likely – uh, accurate than anything else out there. If I take a look at not only does the U.S. dollar index have, well, the U.S. dollar index has descending trend line resistance, the U.S. Uh, Goldilocks has a rising trend line support line, which was tested so far and is held as well as the bottom of its profile. Now, I also have drawn in here, John, a descending trend line. What gold has been doing uh, since the trading day of December 29th, so for the, all of 2024 so far, has been consolidating with inside its profile. And that's between the range of about 2041, it's actually 2041.10 and 2085.50 out there. So on a daily basis, that's what it's doing. Your specific question, was there anything that I saw that supports your idea that that was just simply a flush to wipe out stops and so forth? The answer, from, from my perspective, has to be yes, based upon not understanding what what maybe else was going on out there, or if, if there was anything associated with the currency uh, move, and I didn't see that currency move. So I think that's supported from my standpoint. Any Did I answer that specific question? Uh, you did. And uh, if we start moving up, uh, what resistance do we need to exceed to confirm that low? And I heard you say something about 2041, which is where we are right this minute. Yeah, so to answer that question from a daily perspective, if let's say the flush this morning was the next bottom in gold's further rally to the upside, then what I would say is price has to take out the high from December 28th. And that high, John, was a TD9 count top. So any close above 2098.20 would then, we probably get a new A to B equals CD to the upside, negates that old pattern, suggests we get back to the prior December high that we just recently uh, formed out here. Price also on the pullback this morning was testing its breakout level at 2029.20. Folks, I'm looking at the daily time frame. But to answer your other question with regard to other, let's say, where else is the defense at? You've got the defenders at the 2065 to 2072 range. And then above that, you're at 2085.50. And then finally, you've got the uh, high from that TD9 count top out there. So those would be the levels that I would be watching out there, as well as I'd go ahead and put those rising and falling uh, trend lines out there, because that could be another area of either support or resistance as we speak. So I hope that that helps answer that question. What else can right. I do for you? You know, Steve, that's, that, that's all very thorough and very helpful, just what I asked. Perfect. So I thank you, and I will bid you adieu. Thanks, John. Always good to hear from you. That was John in Philly, and that was take a look at Goldilocks. Now, I had mentioned currencies out there, and we do have a question that came in. So I'm going to go out of order here just simply because, well, I already spoken about currency. So let's go take a look at the euro. This is a specific. Now, this uh, request is coming in from ESVXM inside our Tiger Den. But I know Peter is probably in the Tiger Den as well, and he'd like to know what's going on with the euro. So when we take a look at the euro, just look at that left-hand, upper left-hand chart. That's the monthly. I'll just expand it out. That monthly shows both a rising and a falling trend line. And you can see here, price fell below the rising trend line, formed a TD9 count bottom back in April of 2022. Look at how that has acted as resistance. It still is out there. To me, that says that the euro's got some other troubles uh, going on. But uh, let's take a look at what's going on currently. That was a longer term picture out there. An intermediate term picture would say, let's go take a look at the weekly chart, which shows that the euro is trading in between support at 1089. That's that green oscillator and change line and resistance. It's TD9 count breakdown level. 1.1065. Whichever side breaks, that's what the likely next intermediate term direction. So when I say break, I mean a close above or a close below, not an intraday or an intraweek. I should not intraday, but an intraweek spike. The daily time frame. The daily time frame out here, you've got price traded below its oscillator and change line. So therefore, should we get a further rally? And I don't know whether we will or we won't. Um, 
out here at ES, and the reason is because we're just trading with Inside Friday's candle. So I'm not getting a very great uh, piece of information. So let's see what the intraday charts tell us. The intraday charts show on a 30-minute basis that the euro should continue to rally. And the reason that that's what it says because there was a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top completed here at um, uh, 10 a.m., Price never even got down to the bottom of that prior candle out there, and it closed above that prior high. Tells us about a strong upward momentum move. Now, in the case of the 30-minute time frame, that upward momentum move may run out of steam as it gets up to its next TD9 count top out there. That's at resistance level. And that was from 10.30 in the morning on January 5th. And that high out there is 1.0998. I suspect that's where the euro is headed to. If it can take that level out, that would be a bullish signal. Don't think that it will. But uh, and that only reason I say I don't think that it will, TD9 count top here. That was the one at 10.30 on January 5th. TD9 count at 5.30 morning on January the 4th. A TD9 count top that took place at uh, midnight back on January the 3rd out there. Uh, the euro at this stage here from a 30-minute basis seems to love the TD9 count. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Folks, 
uh, Dow up uh, off 79. The other U.S. and C still trading to the upside. That's including the spot volatility. Now, the spot volatility, the level that you want to be watching there throughout the uh, day, I believe that's at the uh, price of uh, 13. It's 13.85 right now. Spot VIX is trading out at 13.46. So close below that is likely going to lead to higher highs. But right now, we're looking at the 30-minute time frame charts. I had mentioned the 30-minute charts for the NQ. So I flipped open the other 30-minute charts to see where we're at. And it's the ES Mini that also has completed a TD9 count top. Now, the level to be watching there. So what should take place with regard to the ES and the NQ is price should pull back to test their oscillator and change lines. 47.47 or thereabouts in the ES, uh, 16.574 for the NQ. Now, we're watching the high because if those highs get taken out, they tell you about a strong upward momentum rally that should continue through the morning or the, well, morning, we've got 29 minutes left there. The high to be watching inside the ES Mini is up at 47.6250. Now, you'll notice on that, uh, the ES Mini completed its TD9 count at 11 a.m. So the last bar that just completed never made its way down to the low of that prior bar. It's pretty strong out there. The same as uh, the NQ actually got down to the low. Though it was 16,640.75, it got down to 16,640.25 and rejected that level. Again, a close above the bar following bar number nine. That's the bar from 11 o'clock this morning. That's at 16,671.25, negates that signal and says we're moving higher. So we do have three patterns that are out here the ES, the NQ, and the YM that suggest we should have a retracement. In the case of the YM, it was price getting up to its TD9 count breakdown resistance level up at 37,685. Nonetheless, just because price got up to resistance, completed a pattern and held, that doesn't mean that it's going to guarantee us that it's going to turn back. That's why we want to watch the highs. We want to watch the candles that are being formed out there because they provide us with some very helpful and useful information. Now, let's go take a look at some of the requests that have come in. The first one's coming in from a number of people, I believe, inside the Tiger's Den, and that's with regard to NVIDIA. Having a stellar day out there, Right now, you've got NVIDIA. Let me see. Uh, so there was one more bug that I needed to fix to overcome the delays that I was having. Um, and it still isn't in place out here, but it should be in place by the end of the day. 513.25 is where I've got the last trade firing off for NVIDIA. Here's what we know about NVIDIA, even though my chart here says 510. We know that price is trading above number one, a TD9 count breakdown resistance level. So close today above 503.35 is a bullish signal. It's also taking out or it's testing two swing points. One swing point, that would be the small A to B equals CD pattern, is one from December 18th. And that swing point had 41 million shares. So far today, we are at 31 million shares. So we know this B point has, uh, is, is likely to be taken out with volume. I say likely because I don't know if price is going to close above 504.33 at day's end or not. It looks like it will. That would confirm a small A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. The, um, and that, that small one, by the way, that small A to B equals CD, that would get us up to 563.28. That would be the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern out there. We can see, what else can I see out here? I do see a wave number seven signal out there that needs a lower high to confirm that pattern, uh, Duncan. So I just pay attention to that. If I take it, so the larger A to B equals CD would be dealing with the swing point from November 20th. And that had volume of 41 million shares. We're at 31 million shares already. That's a much larger A to B equals CD. That takes us all the way back down here to uh, where we had that wave number seven bottom. So again, an important thing, Duncan, to be paying attention to that wave seven out there. But that would give us an approximation of, let me just here, just pull this over, get this up there. Where are we at? And that gives us a one-to-one -one price projection of 563. Uh, so that must, oh, that was one I had already drawn in there. Yeah, that was one I, I'm sorry. So the larger A to B equals CD pattern gets us up to 563. The smaller one, let me redraw that. I'm going to do that on my other screen out here. I'm not going to switch over. Nope, I'm sorry. Uh, shoot. I'll do it. I just I grabbed the wrong swing point out there. So the small A to B equals CD pattern gets us up to one to one at 527. So we got 527, 563 as the uh, price target levels for NVIDIA. And that's unless there were a bearish reversal candle, Duncan, that were to show up, that would then confirm a road momentum indicator top. But it's looking good on the daily. It's looking good on the weekly. It's looking good on the monthly out there. In fact, the monthly close above 502.66 negates its TD9 count top. 
And that suggests higher price as well. So, Duncan, I hope that helps you out with regard to NVIDIA. The second request you had was to take a look at the SMH. It turns out they're doing something similar. Or are they? Well, they're doing something similar in that they're trading higher. Uh, they're trading above last Friday's high. That's a bullish signal out there. Of course, this is going to be day number two of consecutive moves higher out there. Price is still below support, and that would be the bottom of its daily profile. That's up at 172.11. That is a likely price target. Your price target on a further rally inside of the SMHs would take us towards 172.11 to 172.94-ish. That is a likely outcome. The reason I believe it's a likely outcome is if we look at the weekly chart, we can see weekly chart shows that prices trade above its green oscillator and change line. That's a bullish condition out there. It's also trading with inside its profile. The top of the profile for the weekly time frame chart is up at, oh, I take it back, it's trading above the top of its weekly profile. So that is a very bullish signal out there. Now, even though I said bullish a couple of times out there, the overall signal on the weekly time frame must be neutral. And the reason that it must be neutral is because there's a TD9 count and Rhodes momentum indicator top. That's a negative. So that'd be on the bearish side, but trade above the top of a profile and above a green oscillator and change line, those are bullish. So we put those two together. We've got offsetting penalties, so to speak, that gets us to a neutral call. Nonetheless, this still suggests that we should see a further rally, 170 to 11, a likely price target. And things are bullish in the SMHs when we take a look at the monthly time frame. So, Duncan, I hope that helps you out with regard to what the charts are telling us about the SMHs. David H. wants us to take a look at ticker symbol SMCI. So SMCI having a wonderful day. It already confirmed an A to B equals CD uh, pattern. It did that on the trading day of, that happens to be the high out here, recent high, December 18th. It took out the swing point with volume. That was uh, 5.7 million shares that took out 3.6 million shares. Now, the one-to-one -one price projection is at the 331.22 level out there. A price is trading inside a bullish structured daily profile above that green oscillator and change line. Odds favor, David, that price will go target 327. Now, I know you're in the 300 calls. They expire on the 19th. Uh, this is certainly signaling to you and I that price should continue to move higher, at least right now at this stage of the game. Now, this is going to be bar number three or day number three of consecutive moves higher for this. The caution signal out here, we don't see it on the daily time frame. David, the caution signal is really on the weekly time frame. And we can see that price has a bearish structured weekly profile. And that's between the range of 313.82 up to 342.61. Uh, back a few weeks ago, the week of December 22nd, uh, we had price try to get into that range and it was turned back. So, you know, your 315.51, let's uh, the monthly chart looks very bullish as well as price is trained above profile. Here, here's our Texas two-step. Here's our dance moves. Our dance moves show three consecutive moves to the upside. Yeah, there's not, you know, the way this is trading here, no reason for it to not have four or five consecutive games to the upside. So the SMCI trade looks pretty good. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. thing on those uh, charts for SMCI I pulled open a 30 minute time frame chart we can see the A to B equals CD pattern that is uh, underway out here so what you'd be watching for and everything looks bullish by the way on um, David but if you did see a bearish reversal candle for him on a 30 minute time frame that would generate a sell the D point uh, top out there so just be on the lookout uh, for that you may not get it this may just simply continue to rally I'm not seeing any signs that it shouldn't out there so I just wanted to finish that off so I hope that, that helps you out two other questions that we've got right now the first one from G-Man inside the Tiger's Den G-Man would like to take a look at Disney and his question is will this move up to 94 in order to do that um, <clears throat> Michigan needs to win the game tonight I'm ah, just kidding. Like Washington could, could win. Now, as we take a look at Disney, what I was really referring to is uh, Price has got to take out the defense. And I don't know if it's going to be able to do that. Right now, it's proven that it can't, at least as of 11.43. The defense is up at 92 bucks. $92 is the top of its daily profile and its green oscillator and change line. And that has proven that oscillator and change line has proven to be a little booger when it comes to uh, Disney out there. So I'd have to say that right now, getting to 94 means you've got to take out that resistance level, the top of that profile. If I look at the weekly time frame, is there any information here? There's really not. It's just a good old fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. If price were to take out last week's high, and that means close above it, well, that would be a short term or intermediate term bullish uh, signal 9208 is the number there but that requires getting above and it would also be a bullish signal to close above the top of that profile on a daily time frame as well as its green oscillator and change line and on a monthly basis we have a good old-fashioned consolidation so the problem here with regard to the Disney charts is they to answer your question will it price get to 94 I don't know the answer to that what I do know though is where the sellers are located and I do know how prices uh, responded as prices have gotten up to that level or those levels over the past several weeks out here. And that is it has not been able to take out those areas. So my answer would be, do I see it moving up to 94? Not until it takes out 92. And it hasn't proven to you or I that it is going to be able to do that. So that's what I'm looking at real quickly here. But it doesn't have to be quick. Let's just look at an intraday chart for Disney, see if there's any signals there. 
And other than a Roads Mentum indicator bottom that confirmed out here at 11 o'clock in the morning back on January the 2nd, that's really led to kind of a sideways price action move. This 9191 level as a TD9 count breakdown area, that's proven to be a tough level of resistance to actually get through. So I hope that helps you out, G-Man, with regard to uh, Disney. Best of luck to you on that trade. Uh, the next question coming in from Ronan inside the Tiger's Den. And Ronan would like to take a look at TXN, Texas Instruments. Now, Ronan is asking the question, uh, do you think it is currently in a daily bounce before heading lower or has it bottomed and is now headed to uh, test to break out the high? That's a great question. And what we're going to do out here, Ronan, is we're going to answer that question by looking at the charts. And the charts are the ones that are going to be able to answer that question for you. Perhaps it will even answer that question for you at day's end. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame for Texas Instruments, what we can see out here is this formed a wave number seven top. Very small portion of the Chapman wave. Very, very small portion. An important portion, though. Gets to wave number uh, seven. It forms that top and moves lower. It closes below the bottom of its bullish structure. It's really important, Ronan, to pay attention to. That price closed below the bottom of its bullish structured profile for at least two consecutive sessions. That tells us about a change in trend. Does it have to be a change of trend? No. Your other part of the question is, have we bottomed out here? Well, or is this just a counter trend move? The key there was bullish structured profile. If this is only a counter trend move, then the high is in and price would be Texas Instruments would be getting ready to head lower. I don't know the answer. What the I know what the answer is at 1146. I don't know what the answer will be at 4 p.m. But if price does close above 167.24, that's the center of its bullish structured profile, that'll add to the idea of at least a further rally and that this might be a bottom. It could be a bottom inside of Texas Instruments. What happens if price doesn't close above 167.24? Then the only way that you and I could read, or the only way that I could read the daily time frame chart is that this is only a counter trend move. Now, if it's only a counter trend move, what I'd like to see is some type of intraday time period topping patterns out there. So before I go take a look at the weekly or the monthly, we're going to go try to search for that. Here's a 30-minute time frame. 30-minute time frame chart has an A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go take a look at it. Here's A to B. We'll just simply draw that or take that line. We'll just simply move that over to the swing point that took place after that high, the lowest low after that high. So you can see we haven't achieved that level, that level being a 168 and change area. So there's no topping signal yet on a 30-minute time frame for you to worry about. How about a 65-minute time frame chart? What do we have here? I still see an A to B equals CD, no topping signal. How about a 130-minute time frame chart for Texas Instruments? What do we have there? We have a TD9 count bottom pattern out here so that's a, a positive there's your bottom bottom potential bottoming signal that's on the 30 minute time frame so here i don't see it. the next resistance level quite frankly ronin is up at 171.70 let's take a look at the last intraday chart here 195 see if there's any kind of signals there and the answer is there is none so from an intraday standpoint the only bottom signal you've got is coming from that 130 minute time frame well maybe it's not the only bottom potential bottom signal and here's the other one that's out there. What I notice when I take a look at its daily dance steps is Texas Instruments move lower for four consecutive trading sessions. You can typically, if once you get beyond four, so that means five out there, that's typically a sign of a change in trend. We can see that uh, on the retracement that took back here, so the bottom formed on October 30th. And then it was a four-day consecutive dance step move out there back on November 9th. And then we simply saw Texas Instruments rally from there. So the dailies got that bar number four set signal out there. The 130-minute chart, I believe, was has that TD9 count bottom. If price closes below that low, I'll go back and make sure you have that low out there for that 130-minute time frame chart. That would be your confirmation. In my opinion, that would be your confirmation that this was only a counter trend move. So it's, we're just trying, just trying to make it as easy as I can for you. I know sometimes we'd like to have that number right to the T. Well, here's the number right to the T. If price closes below 162.40, that tells me, well, one, we'd have an A to B equals CD to the downside very likely. But that pattern will have failed, and that will suggest that the move higher today was just 
just a counter trend move. What else can I share with you about Texas Instruments? Another reason why this could just simply that we could have formed a bottom after that four day move after the, after that 130 minute TD nine count is because if you take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it formed a new weekly profile last week out there, and that was below price. That is a bullish signal out there. Nonetheless, 170.90, a TD9 count breakdown area, that's proven to be a strong area of resistance. So I'm going to summarize it like this, Ronan. I don't know the answer to that. Neither do you. That's probably why you asked so, but, but we will know the answer. If you get a price close above 167.24, odds favor this as a further rally and that it might have really been a bottom out there. Again, you still have resistance. That battle's going to be up at around the 169.41 level. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request out there. We've gotten through all of the requests as far as I can see out there. That's a good thing. As we come back to this break, we only have about two minutes left. Steve Rhodes with TF and I'll try to find some morsel of information for you and I to take a look at. Be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got a quest from uh, John inside the Tigers Den. John C. wants to take a look at the Lightspeed Crew, his question specifically. Is there any support other than $70.14, which happens to be the bottom of that daily profile? So when we take a look at the left-hand panel of this chart, we can see 
We had a, a nice roads momentum indicator bottom. We have a TD9 count top. We've got price that's been consolidating with inside the profile. It's really between the bottom and the center. That's a bearish structure daily profile. The question, the answer to the question, is there another level of support below 7014? The answer to that, John, is yes. It's 67.98. That's courtesy of that TD9 count top. Where's another level? 69.54. 69.54 is the bottom of the weekly profile. Where's another level? That's it. Those are the support areas that I have for Light Sweet Crude. So again, 7014, 6798, and 6954 are the three different levels that Stevie has for support. Joe D wants to take a look at Workday. WDAY is a ticker symbol. Let's go take a look at it. WDAY. And the question is, please, uh, if you can squeeze it in. Okay, let me see here. We take a look at Workday. Workday is back inside its daily profile. It was only below it for one session, so it's still in a consolidating pattern after a wave number seven, Rhodes to indicator top. That's between the consolidation out here, Jody, is between 266.85 and 279.83. Uh, you don't have any kind of a top on the weekly time frame. In fact, the weekly time frame pulled back, tested support, that green oscillator and change line. It remains in bullish condition. It does have resistance at 279.83. I don't see anything but good news when I take a look at the monthly time frame chart out there. No resistance. Looks like an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside out there. So workday looks pretty good, Joe D. The daily time frame still back in this consolidation pattern. The weekly held that green oscillator and change line. So that looks pretty good. Folks, that takes us to the end of the show. Want you to have a marvelous, magnificent, magnificent Monday. That's right, magnificent twice. Have it a double magnificent day out there. I'll see you back here tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. Take care. Be safe out there. Thanks for joining me.